Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Andy at Lawrenceville Garage here. Got a new project I'm pretty excited about, and I think a lot of you might be as well. Uh, we've seen a lot of the first-gen Toyota Tacomas with LS swaps, and that's cool. Not very many second-gens. It's a cool truck. Uh, I'll take you a walk around uh, quickly in a moment and just kind of show you some things about it that the owner has already done. He's a friend of mine. A lot of people might be questioning, why on earth would you go any further than he already has? Well, what's enough? Currently, it's got a supercharged four-cylinder with the manual five-speed uh, transmission. That's uh, a base Tacoma. Uh, it's made a lot of modifications to the suspension, the brakes, uh, the interior. It's going to be a pretty cool truck. Uh, one thing I always recommend, and you'll have seen this in several of my other videos, it doesn't matter what you're working on, whether it's an OBS truck, this Tacoma, or anything else. When you're going to do an engine swap, one of the most intimidating parts of the swap itself is the wiring. It comes to wiring, people get kind of freaked out, and it's like it's, it, it can be complicated. It looks complicated. If you uh, take it apart one strip at a time, one wire at a time, you usually figure things out pretty well. But something that's a huge help, and I've recommended this in other videos, is to get a factory, if possible, electrical and wiring schematic for your vehicle. It will make sorting these things out a lot easier. Doesn't mean it's going to be a cakewalk, but it does mean it gives you something to work from so you know how the vehicle is assembled, and it gives you a starting point for a lot of your uh, electrical connections. This truck is no different. I went to eBay, one of my sources, and I found this. It is a factory. 2007 uh, Toyota Tacoma uh, electrical wiring diagram. And it has got more detail and specifics than you can shake a stick at. So this is going to be an invaluable tool in sorting this thing out. So whether it's an OBS truck, the Toyota, or anything, see if you can find something like this, and it'll make the job a little bit easier. Anyway, as I promised, I wanted to show you a few things about the truck and uh, give you an idea of what's already been done to it before we even get started. Okay, here's the truck. It's a 2007 Toyota Tacoma. It came stock with a four-cylinder and a five-speed manual transmission. Uh, I've already got a couple things off just to enhance things. It's nothing major. I simply removed the hood and pulled the bed off the back, and it's sitting over here, of course, uh, silver. The garage cat is taking care of that. Make sure it's safe. Uh, we haven't really done anything else to it yet, so we're going to get started. But it does make it easier to see what's going on. Now, this particular truck, even though it's a 2007, it's only got, I believe, about 36,000 miles on it. And the current engine is the stock four-cylinder. Well, not quite stock. Uh, it does have a supercharger set up. And it's got a, a meth injection system. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it dynoed around 225, I believe, at the tire, which is not bad at all. I mean, it's not a heavy truck. It runs good. But the owner wanted more. And who can argue with that? 225 at the tire or a 300, 350 at the tire at some point. Got to have fun with that. Uh, just moving on to the back. I guess you can see it's also, uh, the suspension's been lowered, I believe about two and a half inches in front, four inches in back. Um, it's got uh, double adjustable rear shocks. 19 inch rims. Some stop tech brakes on the front. Some uh, It's got some performance sway bars. Something that is pretty cool uh, in the interior get over here to it and show you uh, the bench seat has gone away and we got a set of FRS bucket seats console I'm not quite sure what that came out of I can always find out uh, we've got an extra set of gauges on the steering column it's got a backup camera it's got some nice features in here and you need to notice that five speed well, we plan to put in this. It 
It's an all aluminum 5.3, that's the L33. You have stainless exhaust. It's got the Corvette front drive accessories. Uh, that's actually a truck intake. It's been shaved and painted. It looks really nice. And we're going to do our best to keep all this as possible. It's got the AC compressor, low mount alternator. I believe this is a Camaro power string pump. Uh, we're trying to keep everything intact and uh, not cut the truck up as we put it in. Transmission is going to be a Tremec TKX, wide ratio 5 speed. Uh, we've got some other parts that are going to go into it. It's going to look sharp. My goal is to make it look as factory as possible. Uh, and all the gauges working and everything functioning as it should with air conditioning as well. There's no sense having all the horsepower if you're driving around out in the heat and you got and you got no AC. So we need it to work. So hope you'll follow along. Like and subscribe. Join us. Hit the notification bell so you know every time we got a new video that uh, you'll be up to date on what's happening. First thing we're going to do uh, in the process is to change out the fuel pump. That's why the bed's off. The reason I wanted to change the fuel pump first is if we don't, with all the modifications we're going to do and with all the wiring and everything, if for some reason the truck doesn't start when we want it to start, there will always be the question, could the fuel pump be involved? So this way we've got the bed off. We'll put the fuel pump in first. Make sure the truck still runs with it. It does. We're good. We'll probably leave the bed off for a little longer just so it makes it easier to get to the, the drivetrain and the exhaust and everything that's back in the back. Just a lot easier. Even though we've got a lift, it's just easier when the bed's off and we can access it from the top instead of crawling under the truck every time. Um, after we change out the fuel pump, the next step will be disassembly uh, of everything under hood and pulling the engine transmission out, the current one. But I also want to do it slowly in the sense that I want to use that manual uh, that I showed you a moment ago. And I want to label every single wire and connection that comes off this thing. Because it's going to take some time to do this. And things have a habit of, uh, details becoming a habit of being a little foggy over time. Where did this wire go? Did that, do I need this or do I not? You label it as it comes off, lay it to the side, don't cut anything until you absolutely have to. So, hope you'll follow along. We're going to get started now on that fuel pump. Uh, a lot of the videos, uh, as I mentioned before, that have done you know this sort of swap didn't have a lot of detail. Didn't really show you uh, what was going on. Not that this is a step-by-step process in that you can follow for years. You may be able to do that. That's not the intention. I want to show you the details so that we don't gloss over anything important. So if you are considering a swap like this for your truck, uh, you could follow along as we are. Uh, there are a lot of choices. People ask, well, how much is a swap like this? It's, a, it's really hard to put a number to it because it depends on the level of detail you want. Uh, the engine you're starting with, the, tra the transmission, the, dr the whole drive line, what accessories do you want? Do you care if your AC works or not? AC can get expensive. Uh, there, there's a, so many things, the level of tune, the level of modifications. Uh, this one, luckily, a lot of the uh, performance parts have already been added to the chassis and everything, so it doesn't need those upgrades. But there's just so many choices you can make, and it really alters you know, drive-by wire, drive-by cable, uh, tuning, uh, the list goes on and on. And I'm sure you already are, are aware of this. But we want to take you through basically how we're going to do this whole thing so that you would have a good idea if you decided to do this to your truck, how it would go and what you might need to do or what you might not need to do. We hope you'll follow along. I hope you like it and enjoy it. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you think and... You know, I know there's the Toyota purists out there that are going to say, hey, keep that engine, but it's all in the name of hot rodding. So stay tuned.